Hey guys, it's Mark. Um, this is the Mark Wilson Sports Show, and um, this is um kind of about sports and kind of not because um my um ESPN like idol um Stuart Scott died from cancer this year, and um I'm just gonna break it down to you. This video is about cancer, and um. I don't know if you guys know that um in a 7.6 million people die from cancer in a year. Um coming from a f my my family like um I have lost a lot of people from from cancer. Um I have lost two uncles and aunt um Etc. People with cancer at the moment. <laughs> Not saying names, but um, Stuart Scott. Um, he he's one of the reasons why I really want to get into this sports broadcast thing. Um, his um, SB's award um speech was unbelievable. Um. I'm gonna add his speech to this video because it it it's very touching and it's very sad and it's very that is unbelievable. Seven point six people die from cancer a year, and we have raised. This is the only in six years we have raised four point nine billion dollars for cancer. And 7.6 million people have died from cancer. I, I, it makes no sense. I don't get the, it, it's such a stupid, it, just, just hearing the word cancer just makes me very pissed off because I have lost an, two uncles from it, um, my aunt. And it's it's very sad seeing seeing someone very close to you die slowly from the from a disease. I don't know how to explain it to you guys, but like it sucks a lot. But um, Stuart Scott for ESPN, he changed ESPN like a lot. Like he started the Booyah. Um, he made, like, ESPN, like, hip hop -y. I'm, like, in the rap music, and, um, but really, though, like, the past six years, we have raised $6.9 billion, and I just looked it up on Google, and it said $7.6 million have, 7.6 million people have died from a cancer. I don't know what they're doing with that money, but four point nine billion dollars seems like a lot of money. But um, um, people out there, if you have an iPhone or an iPod, I suggest you to um download this app called Charity Miles. I've been using it because um. I'm not gonna go get into it at the moment. There's a Pacific person has cancer in my family. I don't want to get into the moment right now. But um, every I think I think it's like every mile you run, you give a dollar to cancer or something. But you can pick like different categories. You can pick like you can put money into Special Olympics. You can put money into the Wounded Warrior Project. You can put money into, um... There's totally different things, but I've been, um, just sticking with the cancer lately because... My, my, I, I just... It, it sucks. Like, I have lost a lot of people in my family from cancer, and it really sucks. And... 
I don't know how to describe it to you guys, but but um another topic, Relay for Life is very good program has raised a lot of money for cancer. Um I love how they um you got you that you make the bags and you put the light you put the candles in the bag and then you walk around like a track and then like I did it for one year for my uncle and my aunt. You made a bag for them and you put a you put a candle in it and then you walk around the track and then you stay overnight. It's it's pretty cool. It's really cool. Um but um that is insane. I just googled I just googled like how many people die from cancer a year and it it popped up 7.6 billion people. And the last this is only 6 years. We have raised 4.9 billion dollars. And still 7.6 million people have died from cancer. Um, I don't know how to describe it to you, but seeing someone slowly die from a disease is very, very sad and depressing. I don't know how to, like, describe it to you. It sucks. Like, there's days when... They're, like, very, very cool, and they're very, very awesome. And then there's days when they're very sick, and they don't want to do anything, and they just sit in bed all day. Um, it's very depressing. It's depressing on people that don't even have cancer. It's depressing on people that... Don't even have cancer, but seeing your own your your family member that has the cancer, and seeing them going through that situation makes you feel very 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 depressed because you wish you could just give them your strength and just give it to them. You know what I'm saying? Like you get what I'm saying? But um. I give a lot of respect to um, Relay for Life. Um, Stuart Scott was was one of my ESPN idols. He was he was awesome. Um, that just blows my mind away, though. But like, seven point six million people die from a cancer disease or just a random disease, and. If I got my facts right and I looked it all up on Google right, it said the last the past six years we have raised four point nine billion dollars for cancer research and seven point six million people have died from cancer. Why don't they just I don't know I've seen like a movie, I don't I forget what movie it is. It's some um some, like, action movie or some, like, one of those, like, sci-fi movies. Like, they put, like, a person into, like, a cat skin. And then they're, like, they, like, if someone had cancer and then they put them into a cat skin. And they're, like, cancer-free. Why can't they find, like, a cat skin or some MRI or some, like, why can't they find something like that that can do something for that? Like, you just let the person sit in a uh, CAT scan for like 10 minutes and then it'll be cancer free and then the cancer is out of their body. But no, they have to give them chemo and then you have to see them slowly die. You, you get what I'm saying? It's very depressing seeing someone slowly die from cancer. I don't, I don't want to get into. I'm not really good at these kind of speeches. I'm sorry. That's what I'm saying. Um, but Stuart Scott, his SB speech was absolutely perfect. And it sucks that he's dead. Because listening to him on ESPN was absolutely awesome. He, he was a funny dude. He was a very cool dude. And um, the fact that Cancer took his life absolutely sucks. 
and um I would I would die I would wish I would die to have my uncle Jimmy back from camp I would die to have my aunt Sheila back um John back I wish all of them like just cuz some stupid little disease makes them slowly die and they like they just die it sucks and um again I'll add Stuart Scott's speech to this um guy was an absolute boss and he made sports center like hip hoppy it's awesome but um and again if you have an iPhone or an iPad I suggest you or an iPod download the um the app Charity Miles because every mile you run or every every like point you run it gives like 25 cents to cancer or wounded warrior project or like something like that or something. I I don't know, my sister told me to download it and we we made like a little Wilson family thing and it's pretty cool. I've already ran 12 miles cuz I run every day and I work out every day so um yeah, uh basically cancer sucks and I wish it was never really existed. A lot of people have died from it. A lot of cool people have died from it. A lot of my family members have died from it and a very it, it sucks a lot. I lost my grandpa, my great grandpa, my uncle, my aunt, my uncle. I can I can name many people that have died from cancer in my family, and it sucks a lot. And um, um, yeah. Um, so this is the the Mark Wilson Sports Show. It's not really about sports, but Short ska is kind of about sports. The guy was an absolute stud and a boss, and he was an awesome anchor man for ESPN. And um, I'm just gonna say it: fuck cancer. I wish it never existed. A lot, too many people have died from it, and um, a lot of too many nice people have died from it. And, um, yeah, uh, this, this, this information I just found on Google is absolutely insane. I can't believe that people, 7.6 million people die from cancer in a year. That is absolutely insane. But, um, and we have raised $4.9 billion for cancer. In six years. But 7.6 million people have died from cancer. I don't get it. But um, this is um, the Mark Wilson Sports Show. It's not really about sports. It's about cancer. And um, I just wanted to make this video. I'm sorry. Um, I just have a lot of stuff in my mind right now. I'm just thinking about a lot of stuff at the moment. But um, I will talk to you guys later. All right. And cooler than the other side of the pillow to the lexicon, he brought his wit, his attitude, and a lust for life all his own. In November 2007, sadly, Stewart was diagnosed with cancer. True to his form, Stewart shared his experiences fighting this disease with us while managing to do extraordinary things in the face of seemingly unsurmountable odds. Stewart's journey has been one full of great challenges, but even greater has been the love from his family. And like the great man his award is named for, Stewart has never, ever given up. Are you ready, young man? Yeah. Uh, uh. Really? <laughs> <laughs> it's Wednesday in Baltimore, Maryland. Doctor visits have become routine for Stewart Scott. But today is different. Today, he finds out if he qualifies for an experimental treatment. 
a trial he's already been rejected from twice before. But giving up has never been an option for Stewart. Since he was diagnosed with a rare form of cancer in 2007, he has refused to back down. The first thought was, I'm going to die. And about probably five seconds later, I'm going to die and I'm going to leave Taylor and see. I don't want them to be without a dad. Cancer kills you. People die from cancer. Stewart would not allow the disease to dictate how he lived. And for seven years, he's continued to battle. He's a fighter, and when I say he's a fighter, he's mentally, physically, emotionally. He has a lot of things to fight for, and he has a lot of help in that fight. He's an inspiration to me. I have to feel as much as I can like I don't have cancer. Although, I think about cancer 20 times a day. But his true focus remains on the most important thing in his life, his family. Oh! Way to go, girl! One thing that Stuart may never really understand is the impact that he has had on people all around the world. There are a lot of people that see him as a beacon of light and something that they can relate to. I hear you're in a fight, too. Yeah. I'm seven years in. Are you? Yep. Wow. So do what you want to do. All right? Yep. Hang in there, brother. Thank you very much. Hang in there. We're we'll talking about you, right? Are we going to be on television? We might be. You ought to tell me that. What's good? Sports Center Roland Stewart Scott here. We got more of us. I think what he does is all the things that, as his close friend, I want to say, stop doing. Stop working out so hard. Stop traveling so much. Why are you doing so many sports centers? But it's what keeps him going. So Stuart pushes on. That is how he wins. I hear from people every day. He's on TV and he's doing what he loves. They take strength from the fact that he has not been paralyzed by his illness and that he's decided to live life on his own terms. After being rushed to the hospital during the NBA Finals a year ago, Stewart vowed to make it back here. Thank you very much, and congratulations again to the now five-time champion, San Antonio Spurs. So this year, on Father's Day, Game 5 was about more than just a championship. It was about family. Instead of sending you home tomorrow, I get to go home with you tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Yay, Spurs. When people ask me, are you worried? Are you scared? I've never really been really worried because he's always told me, he's always had the most confidence ever, and he's always told me that he's going to get through it and that we're going to get through it together. She knows what I'm going through. And if I can work hard, it's not just being the best. It's working hard. It's her knowing that, I, that I'm working hard for this. I want her to take that with her. Back at Johns Hopkins, Stewart finally receives word about the clinical trial. Everything is a go. Yeah. So here we go. Clinical study. Thank you. You're welcome. You. I don't want you to leave. Will you hold my hand? Fighting is winning. Not quitting. Not saying, oh, I have cancer. Or I can't do anything. I'm just going to lay down and... and cry a pity party for myself. That, to me, is the only way you lose. Oh, won't you stay with me? Cause you're all I need. I've been fighting it for seven years, so that sucks. You've had to deal with it for seven years. I've been fighting it for seven years, so that's good. Seven years, you've, you've battled it. And if... If losing the battle is passing away, then I guess I haven't lost the battle. But darling, stay with me. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my profound honor to present the 2014 Jimmy V Perseverance Award to Stuart Scott.
You know, tomorrow all my boys are going to be like, yo, man, I saw you at the ESPYs with Peyton Manning, Money Mayweather, and KD. I'm going to be like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jack Bauer saved the world, and he introduced me. <laughs> 24 is my favorite TV show of all time, so Kiefer Sutherland, thank you very much. I am very honored. Every day I am reminded that our life's journey is really about the people who touch us. When I first heard that I was going to be honored with this reward, the very first thing that I did was I was speechless, briefly. I've presented this award before. I mean, I've watched in awe as Kay Yao and Eric Legrand and all these other great people grace this stage. And although intellectually, I get it. I'm a public figure. I have a public job. I'm battling cancer. Hopefully, I'm inspiring. At my gut level, I really didn't think that I belonged with those great people. But I listened to what Jim Valvano said 21 years ago. The most poignant seven words ever uttered in any speech anywhere. Don't give up. Don't ever give up. Those great people didn't. Coach Valvano didn't. So to be honored with this, I now have a responsibility to also not ever give up. I'm not special. I just listened to what the man said. I listened to all that he said, everything that he asked of us. And that's to build the V Foundation. And let me tell you, man, it works. I'm talking tangible benefits. You saw me in that clinical trial. Now, here's the thing about that. Coach Valvano's words 21 years ago, helping me and thousands of people like me right now, direct benefits. That's why all of this, why we're here tonight, that's why it's so important. I also realized something else recently. You heard me kind of allude to it in the piece. I said, I'm not losing. I'm still here, I'm fighting. I'm not losing. But I gotta amend that. When you die, that does not mean that you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and in the manner in which you live. So live, live, fight like hell. And when you get too tired to fight, then lay down and rest and let somebody else fight for you. That's also very, very important. I can't do this don't give up thing all by myself. I got thousands of people on Twitter and on the streets who encourage me. I got these amazingly wonderful people at ESPN. I got corporate executives, my bosses, this is true, who will text message me. And they'll say, hey, uh, heard you had chemotherapy today. You want me to stop by on the way home from work and pick you up something to eat and bring it to you? Seriously? Who does that? Whose boss does that? My bosses do that. But even with all that, the fight is still much more difficult than I even realized. What you didn't see in the piece is what's gone on probably the last 10 days. I just got out of the hospital this past Friday. Seven days stay. Man, I crashed. I had liver complications. I had kidney failure. I had four surgeries in a span of seven days. I had tubes and wires running in and out of every part of my body. And guys, when I say every part of my body, every part of my body. As of Sunday, I didn't even know if I'd make it here. I couldn't fight. doctors and nurses could, the people that I love, my friends and family, they could fight. My girlfriend who slept on a very uncomfortable hospital cot by my side every night, she could fight. The people that I love did last week what they always do. They visited, they talked to me, they listened to me, they sat silent sometimes, they loved me. And that's another one of the components of the V Foundation. This whole fight, this journey thing is not a solo venture. This is something that requires support. I called my big sister Susan a few days ago. Why? I needed to cry. 
It was that simple. And I know that I can call her. I can call my other sister, Cynthia, my brother, Stephen, my mom and dad, and I can just cry. And those things are very important. I have one more necessity. Yeah, it's really two. Two very vibrant, intelligent, beautiful young ladies. The best thing I've ever done, the best thing I will ever do, is be a dad to Taylor and Sydney. It's true. I can't ever give up because I can't leave my daughters. Yes, sometimes I embarrass them. Sometimes they think I'm a tyrant. That's a direct quote. <laughs> there is an adjective that described tyrant too, but I'm not going to go there. But Taylor and Sydney, I love you guys more than I will ever be able to express. You two are my heartbeat. I am standing on this stage here tonight because of you. My oldest daughter, Taylor, I wanted her to be here, but college sophomore, summer school, second semester, starting this week. Baby girl, I love you, but you go do you. You go do that. My littlest angel is here. My 14-year-old. Sidney, come up here and give Dad a hug because I need one. I want to say thank you, ESPN. Thank you, ESPYs. Thank all of you. Have a great rest of your night and have a great rest of your life. Shit, man. All I say is fuck cancer, man. News to report to you this morning. Our colleague, our friend, and our inspiration, Stuart Scott, passed away earlier today. At July's SP Awards, Stuart Scott told the audience, when you die, it does not mean that you lose to cancer. You beat cancer by how you live, why you live, and in the manner in which you live. Since 1993, those of us here at ESPN fortunate enough to work with Stuart saw how he lived. And in the past seven years, as he fought cancer, we saw why he lived for his daughters, Taylor and Sydney. And so today, we choose not to say that Stuart lost to cancer at the age of 49. Instead, we'll simply say that we all Lost to her. Somebody who's smiling and watching down on us now, man, and for us to honor him is to smile and do what we do best. Because we all know if he was here right now, we'll be we'll be joking, we'll be doing the same thing right now. And Susie, he loved you. <laughs> loved you. Yeah. Like a sister. And talked about you all the time, even when you weren't around. Darn Trent. <laughs> Because uh, that really helped me, you know, about we gained an angel. Sue, we good. Trust we me. We're, we're lucky. We're very, very lucky. Yeah. And we're grateful. Yeah. We're grateful for the spirits. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was, un it was undaunted, indomitable. And uh, we're grateful. We're grateful for you. Yeah. On January 10th, he was laid to rest. And it was a magnificent service celebrating his spirit. It was powerful, emotional, joyful. As stories were shared and tears shed, we realized how vast his impact really was. You know, like just like the guy said, you could feel everyone wanting to pay it forward to be a better parent, friend, cancer fighter, or truly Stuart just to simply have more fun because he loved to have fun. And Stuart loved his golf. This is his 40th birthday outing, flanked by his dad on his left. And on the right is buddies, Scotty, Paul, and Brian. And perhaps our most treasured connection, Stuart and I, I was honored to hold his daughter Taylor the day she was born. And he held my daughter Taylor on, on the day of her heartbreak. So let me 
share my favorite picture. Because when Kelly was nine months old, she came to her very first NFL game. And I just always thought that picture was magical. Oh, so what will I miss the most? He was universally known for his hugs. Strong, meaningful, and filled with love. We can't replace that. <laughs> but we were happy we had him in our lives. And the legacy lives on, which of course is what Stuart was all about too. In his memory, the V Foundation created the Stuart Scott Memorial Cancer Research Fund to help assist some of the most vulnerable and disproportionately impacted communities. Stuart was a passionate voice for improving care for African Americans and other minorities with cancer. If you want to contribute, visit jimmyv.org backslash Stuart Scott.